Welcome to Mad About Money, the podcast that is mad about money. I'm Maddie Alexander Grout and I'm with Charlie Bond, who is the founder of Worn Out Mums Club. Hi, Charlie. It's so Hi. nice to have you on. Thank Hi. you for having me. So tell me a little bit about Worn Out Mums Club. Sure. So basically, um, a few years ago, so I'm a I'm a journalist by day, really. Um, and a few years ago, I um, in the magazine that I was working for had to do some uh, styling for photo shoots, and I didn't really know how to do it. So I signed up to do some courses. Um, so I did a, a course in editorial styling, and then one in personal styling. Um, and I've sort of always had that on the back burner of kind of things that I, I like I'm really interested in and really enjoy doing, but I never yeah. sort of pursued it as a job. Um, and then during lockdown, one of the many, many lockdowns, um, I so I went freelance basically at the beginning of um, the COVID out pandemic and didn't know what was kind of coming. Obviously, So that was a, a fun move. Um, but I started to do some personal styling for people kind of during lockdown um, and really enjoyed doing it. And it was mostly done virtually, obviously, because we couldn't meet in person. So I was sending yeah. outfit ideas, that kind of thing. Um, again, didn't really do too much with it. And then I had a baby in 2021 and I suddenly realized how difficult it is to dress for yourself when you're pregnant when you're a new mom like and I just didn't see the point in wasting a load of money like when I was pregnant I did waste quite a lot of money on maternity clothes that like just didn't fit well and I just thought you you wear them for such a short amount of time like there must be alternatives to this so I kind of started the worn out mums club as uh, initially it's just kind of like an inspiration place to get ideas for like if you're pregnant or you're you're a new mum and you know your body's changing you've got different different shape different size and just kind of outfits that you could put together easily that mostly you know elasticated have pockets like all the essentials yeah Um, and also just shops that you can go to when you're pregnant that you can buy as a normal clothes that you can wear again after you've had your baby. So you're not kind of wasting money buying stuff once and then buying it again. Um, so that like, yeah, so, so it all sort of stemmed from there, really. What a fabulous idea. Thank you. Um, and, and also so much more sustainable. Like I yes. absolutely hate, like I hate how many like maternity tops are still in my like still in my possession <laughs> and I'm like do I really want to wear that dress just because it's got flaps I mean like yeah, okay, yeah. I mean I guess maybe if you were going on a night out and you wanted to get some free drinks you know maybe that would work <laughs> but you know it it is it's really hard and actually yeah. I think moms do need guidance on this so well done because yeah. it sounds like, sounds like a really positive um positive thing to launch and yeah you know, that that's that's really yeah really going to be super helpful to to mums um hope, yeah because I, I mean, there there are a few kind of like second handy type websites that you know you can go and sell things on. Mm-hmm. But you know, take take things like um, JoJo Mammon Bebe, for example. Like you end up spending forty quid on a top. Yeah, and they're the you know they're the only ones that you think, oh, that's really stylish and really nice. And actually, I'm not going to look like a frumpy cow who's just getting my boobs <laughs> out every five yeah. seconds. Um, really, they you know really mums do need things that are slightly more achievable and attainable and and you know actually one of the things that I ended up doing was like the one the one top up one top down yeah I did because like I mean I ended up with like a lot of stretchy vest tops where like I could just whap a boob out and lift one up and it was like you know you just need a peaky hole don't you but (laughs) but it but it's that kind of that that prep that goes into that when you've got all of the this other stuff thing you know you're not really thinking I want to dress nicely no exactly Um, and you do and dressing, it, you're just yes. sort of, you're sort of stuck because you you kind of you feel like well I'm, I'm a mum and so like realistically like what am I going to wear and you do end up just wearing you know vest tops and stuff because it's the easy option um so it's kind of trying to find something like because you don't want to you don't want to feel rubbish about yourself at a time where you do no. feel like you're sleep deprived and you know you just so but it's also a case of um uh, somebody I follow on Instagram was saying the other day about oh you should never you know you never save your clothes for best you should just wear them whenever but it's also recognizing that's not always practical like as a no. I'm like if you're taking your child to soft play you're not going to be wearing your fanciest frock are you but you like if you might want to look nice but realistically you're gonna get snacks smeared on you like you know wearing a hundred yes. silk isn't, isn't the one <laughs> So exactly that, exactly that. And I think I think actually it's it's almost easier for maternity to be able to find stretchy dresses and you know things that are practical when you're not breastfeeding. Yes, yeah. Um, because you don't need the flaps at that point. Yeah. But it's the quick boob access that you need yeah. once you, you know once you've actually had children. And that's and that's hard. It is. Um, and then it's, it's yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so with everything specially designed, it's like, oh, this has got a fun like zip and all this kind of stuff, which is great. But then once you're past that breastfeeding stage, then you're not wearing those clothes again. And you might have invested, you know, some people, some dresses are like a hundred pounds. And how often are you going to wear that? Like it, it's fine. It, obviously, if you're going to a wedding or something like that, but your everyday wear shouldn't all be that expensive. So no, no, it really, it really shouldn't. And I, th- I think it's hard, isn't it? Because all, a lot of these things, al- although they're, they are slightly more expensive it's almost the worst kind of fast fashion because it's not <laughs> cheap fast fashion yeah, it's yeah. expensive fast fashion yeah. and it's it's only going to serve you for that particular time in your life exactly. where yeah, yeah. you know so I so I think this is an absolutely fabulous idea and I'm very yeah. much behind it very <laughs> much behind it um so what kind of what what's what was your journey to start to start with how did you get into journalism so I'm quite quite interested um, to hear about that as well so I did a degree I was always interested in writing and um like broadcasting that kind of thing so I sort of thought originally I wanted to go into the radio route actually and then the the course I was going to do at uni got dropped last minute so I ended up taking a gap year and um working in Woolworths you know how every dream gap year is spent um, also I mean that's a dream job I mean the, their pick and mix was the best <laughs> oh I know yes but I once you've seen how many children put their fingers in that pick and mix you you <laughs> from the top shelves never never the bottom ones <laughs> oh you don't even ever think of that do you no exactly yeah, yeah it's like the insider sco- scoop no no pun intended but um so yeah I did that and then I went to uni to do a journalism degree just just straight broadcast and um, straight journalism sorry so um a mixture of everything magazines broadcast etc um and then came out of there and got a job working for bliss magazine so teenage girls magazine um, which was Lovely. an absolute dream job. It was it was great, like interviewing boy bands, like it was nice. just, you know, everything that you could want to come out of uni and get a job in. It was just, it was incredible. But I remember being at uni and them sort of asking, you know, like, oh, what kind of journalism do you want to go into? And I'd always sort of said like, oh, you know, lifestyle or something like that. And they were like, oh, that's not really a proper job. Aren't you wanting to go to the, you know, the BBC or the Times? And I was like, well, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, bliss bliss tops all of those I reckon yeah, that. I mean I so. it was it, it was the, it was the gradual present like the kind of the gradual step from like bliss and then when you start to get a little bit older you're like oh more because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more, oh, oh, you want to know what the position of the week is right <laughs> yeah with the Barbie dolls <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't even 